It's not recording. I just started it, yeah. Okay. This meeting Thanks. will be conducted by a remote means. Members of the public who wish to access the meeting may do so uh, in the following manner. Uh, I think the best way is to um, go to the amherstma.gov uh, website homepage. At the bottom of the page where there is a meeting calendar, navigate to today's date, uh, click on that, find the historical commission meeting and that will have uh, the um, connection uh, information by phone and Zoom. Um, for those who um, uh, have difficulty connecting, um, they may email Ben Brager at, at your address. <laughs> and find it online. <laughs> find it online, okay. Um, no in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but every effort will be made to ensure that the public can adequate, adequately access the proceedings in real time via technological means. In the event that we are unable to do so for reasons of uh, economic hardship and despite best efforts, we will post on the uh, amherstma.gov website an audio or video recording transcript or other comprehensive record of proceedings as soon as possible after the meeting. Um, so with that, um, we'll just sort of take a, take attendance of members of the commission who are, are here at this time. Um, Patricia All. She is, is here just, now. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, Pat. Hello. We're Good just timing, Pat. Yeah. We're just uh, taking a roll call of uh, commission members who are in attendance. And as I called your name, you magically appeared. <laughs> <laughs> Present. There you go. <laughs> well done. Robin Fordham. Uh, present. Janet Marquardt. Present. Petty Startup. Present. And Jane Wald. I am, I'm here also. Uh, so let's see, our agenda begins with announcements. And um, are there announcements that anyone uh, would like to bring to our attention? And you're going to do the writer's walk later on the agenda, right? So mm -hmm. correct. Yeah. Okay. 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 Then um, the North Amherst Community Farm Historic Barn um, representatives <clears throat> are here uh, to uh, make a presentation and uh, discuss possible next steps with the historical commission. Great. I will <clears throat> invite Bruce and the rest of the. North Amherst Community Farm Barn, uh, or sorry, a uh, committee to join us here. So I've added Bruce, Dave, Jackie. Hi, Bruce. Hello, Ben. Jane. Hello, Bruce. I think Hetty, we've met. I'm on the uh, Historic Commission, and you were. You, we were talking, and uh, Dave, I see Jackie Fiocchi and uh, Barbara um, uh, Party and Larry Zacharias, and uh, they're a little confused because they're not used to uh, Zoom calls conducted by the town, where you don't see yourself until uh, <laughs> someone like Ben decides that you're going to. Yes, <laughs> uh, um, and, uh, and and it looks like. Uh, Oh, Barbara's here, and uh, I'll let uh, Jackie and Larry may decide to, to uh, put their video on or not. Uh, but um, uh, I will make a, a brief presentation uh, or introduction. And uh, um, Barbara and uh, Jackie and Larry are fellow NACF North Amherst Community Farm board members, and Dave Tepfer is one of the two uh, partners in Simple Gifts Farm who are the lessees. Um, lessees with 50 plus 50 year leases. So this is, um, I mean, this is, it's as good as 
owning it in the sense of their um, durable presence on the property. Um, and Dave also has a very uh, intimate uh, relationship with the barn because he works the farm and he's there all the time. He's, he and I have uh, worked hard on the farmhouse restoration together. So uh, we are contractors of sorts together and so forth. So that's the introduction as to who you're, who is here with us. Um, I should start by saying that, well, the, the question before us is, the, what, is the, what is the fate of this historic barn that we have? We have uh, a, a, a barn building there that was attached to the farmhouse. Um, about four or five years ago, we came to the, uh, we made application to the uh, um, CPA for funds to do a study that would establish, establish or help us establish a case for uh, seeking rest, funds for restoration of the farmhouse uh, uh, from the CPA. The study uh, uh, funds were granted ten thousand uh, dollars, which basically went to uh, financing um, Greg Farmer, the, our historic consultant's presence, and it was matched or more than matched by my commitment of my time. Um, I was still, <laughs> that's long, as long ago, I was still working as an architect with Colderman Hartman before I retired. Um, we, um, uh, we were persuaded by the Historic Commission of the time that we should um, look not just at the farmhouse, but also the barn. Um, the farmhouse was our first priority because it was a, a necessary high functioning building for the purposes of the farm. And it was in pretty good condition structurally and constructionally. It just needed, um, it just needed to be uh, um, brought up to code in all sorts of ways. And we ended up spending a half a million dollars doing that, 150,000 of which was the restoration portion. But the Historic Commission wanted that study to include the barn, and we did. And Ben, I have previously forwarded you the study. The Historic Commission has seen that study in 2018, but more recently I've sent it to you. And that study um, revealed that the barn really was in bad shape. And there are estimates of the cost of bringing the barn back to, uh, well, whether it was going to be rest restored in a, in, a, in a historically accurate way, matching materials, another price for if the building was restored, but with uh, timbers and so forth that would be uh, um, purchased, uh, modern timbers replacing the old timbers where the old timbers had broken or were rotten. And then there was a third price for the reconstruction which is to say taking the barn down and building it as it is now, but in new materials. Um, those figures four years ago ranged from, I think, 200, around uh, just under 300,000 to approximately close to half a million. That's to do the restoration work. Um, we sat on that for the two or three years that it took us to do the restoration of the farmhouse, because as I said earlier, that was the building that we really needed to make function. And the uh, COVID year proved just how critically important that building became because it really allowed the farm to continue as a, as a, a, as a, as a bubbled labor uh, group uh, through that uh, terribly difficult uh, year we've just gone through or year and a half we've gone through. Um, but now uh, the farmhouse is complete, uh, it's functioning, and we are looking at this barn and what do we do with it. And there are <clears throat> a few things that are different about between the barn and the farmhouse. One, uh, well, I've said them, one is that the building is relative, in pretty bad condition. Uh, beams are broken, rot, and so forth. The second factor, which is relevant to us, is that the there is no real use for this building in the uh, in the con in, in so far as the the current uh, program or the current uh, business of uh, farming. This is not a dairy farm anymore. This is a 
mixed uh, vegetable and 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 livestock uh, farm with a very different uh, type of uh, operation and a very different need for building spaces and where those building spaces uh, should be and a very large space right next to the farmhouse um, is not a useful, useful space for anything that the farm uh, currently needs and we don't have a story um, to build uh, a fundraising campaign to restore this building uh, we've had a, we've made some very compelling stories uh, around the need to restore the farmhouse and then the need to retire the debt on the land in other words to purchase the land and we've been successful at raising uh, monies to do both of those things but there's no compelling story that we have associated with this building um, and we don't know anybody who would partner with us who might be as we uh, we were talking with uh, town staff earlier uh, we thought we could find a what we might call a mission rich and a building poor um, organization who could uh, um, share the parcel with us. We thought that entity might be the University uh, Mass Aggie, uh, but they went and built a building just up the road. So their program, their educational, agricultural, sustainable ag program and so forth, which would have been a good fit with us, um, is now happily located in, up the road, not very far, about a quarter of a mile, in a wonderful new building that they built. So they're not a contender anymore, and we don't know anybody else that is. The building, meanwhile, is progressively deteriorating, and uh, it's becoming um, a hazard, and we have to do something. Um, our, our, uh, we've had, over the past 10 years, uh, eight years, five um, uh, post and timber, post and frame construction um, practitioners look at this building. Um, and each one of them has given us some opinion. Uh, and, and one of those, or a couple of those, were what we based our 2017 18 report on. Um, there hasn't really been any change. Uh, we can't um, think of anything to do other than to take the building down. And to do so, we would expect carefully with, uh, uh, with an eye to salvaging the material uh, and using it um, uh, on buildings around the farm, particularly the siding. We have use for as much of that as we can salvage. But um, we thought we wouldn't just make an application for a demolition permit, even though we would call it deconstruction. Uh, the, um, the mechanics of um, building practice would not distinguish and it would be a demolition permit that we would ask for and that would set a clock ticking and that would come to uh, this commission, I think. And, and, we want, and since we knew uh, that you were, you, this commission, is interested in this building, uh, we thought rather than make that application, we would come and discuss it with you. The only thing I can think of is that the town CPA would uh, produce something close to half a million dollars or 300,000 uh, if we were reconstructing, but it doesn't seem that that's a compelling argument that the CPA committee would likely, and I'm not on that committee, and I haven't talked to them about it, but it would be a ask that would be heavily supported and lobbied for by this commission if it was going to happen at all. And if it was, that's what we would need to hear from you, I think. But we wanted to understand what this commission's interest and position might be in regard to this building as we contemplate what seems to us to be the only now available option to us, which is to take the building down. I think that's the, uh, that's all I really need to say to open the conversation. Maybe I should ask if uh, any of my colleagues would uh, add anything to that. I'm not seeing anyone. So let's say that for the moment, that's the starting uh, uh, introduction. Okay, thank you, Bruce. Um, 
So let me turn to commission members to, to ask if you have any questions regarding the information sent out in advance of the meeting or um, questions for, for Bruce and his colleagues right now. Uh, Jan. I was interested in the three options and the way that reproduction is so much cheaper. Um, I realize it's very hard to repair and restore. How, what kind of reproduction are you imagining? I know you said in there that it would be relatively loose that you're not going to do. That would be, you know, more restoration to do an exact replica of the barn. But how, how are you, what, you're thinking to use it as housing. So would it just be the exterior that would look similar? How are you thinking? Uh, bearing in mind that our answers, uh, mine let's say particularly, will be answers that are not um, filtered through a, an intimate knowledge of the current zoning bylaw, although we have had conversations in the past. But mm -hmm. Jen, the answer I think would be if we were going for a reproduction it would be a reconstruction of the building more or less as it is, probably using uh, pine uh, um, material, um, if it's strong enough, um, rather than um, hardwood, I, I'm guessing, but I'm thinking that it would be the least expensive because I think if we were going to use this building if someone were going to use this building and of course we'd have to come up with a use because we could well we could simply say that we're going to reconstruct this building as it is and without any real purpose in mind that would seem to be rather extraordinary so i'm going to assume that there would be a purpose and the the most likely purpose that i can think of would be more housing and uh and I'm not sure exactly for whom, um, but that would mean that there would be interior walls that would uh, be supportive. So we could probably use less substantial, um, uh, um, we, we could probably use uh, uh, softwood uh, uh, members to reframe the building. It would um, probably be done on a poured foundation rather than on lumps of stone, which it currently is on, mm -hmm. or piers, uh, but more likely. And so um, it, if, if we were to do that, we would have to give some th thought to the use. But my, my thought, my guess is that it would be a reconstruction of the barn as it currently appears in form using the least expensive um, framing materials that would create a, a replication at least of the, of the wood timber frame structure, i.e. Post, <coughs> post and beams. So I, I don't imagine that we would build it with stick framing or anything to get this current shape. That would be really stupid. But a replication of the building, uh, a, a reconstruction of the building, um, as I've described, would, would be the would would be that's what we that's what we would mean by reconstruction it would not attempt to salvage the existing structure in any way the existing structure by the way is not a terribly uh, valuable historically i don't think it's uh, it was done on a number of it, it doesn't appear to have been done all at once and the uh, and the framing is is fairly pedestrian for the era um, so we wouldn't be trying to, if we, we, we wouldn't be trying to save anything particularly from that. But you did talk about a certain amount of salvage. Is, is there some, are there a certain number of say chestnut or oak beams or anything that you'd try and reuse or? I don't think so. Not for a reconstruction. We might reuse them, but not in the building. Uh, and I'm not even saying we, I'm saying somebody. I, I don't right, want to, right. I don't want to speak as though NACF yeah, yeah. has got a, a dog, a, a stake in this. But yeah. if someone were reconstructing, they would, they would take the building down, uh, seek to salvage what 
can be salvaged of the uh, structural members. But my guess is that you'd be lucky to find a useful, uh, good use for 20% of those logs. And Dave might have a, a confirming view on this, but it, it seemed to us that these, uh, these beams are in such bad shape that, uh, that you're, you're not going to get a lot of them into another life, at least not, uh, with me, not for the length that they are. The siding, on the other hand, because there's a lot of it and we could salvage, even if we salvage 50% of that, that would be a useful recovery. Mm -hmm. I could just add very little, slightly what Bruce said that, I mean, if you look in the barn, there's virtually none. There might be a couple of the various, you know, structural members, the beams, although all the, all the beams of the framing, there's almost none or at the most a couple that are not broken. Mm. Um, so you would be, you could, you could salvage a lot of pieces, but they'd be short pieces. You know, you could get a mm. 10 foot piece out of this one where it's broken or the end of this one's rotted off. You could get a 10 foot piece out of there. So you'd have a lot of neat pieces of wood, but really short pieces. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The barn's got, it had a tremendous amount of water damage, probably the roof that's on it looks like it was put on it probably in the 30s or 40s and it had a tremendous amount of rot before that. Mm. And it hasn't leaked much since then. So there's rot and then it was um, built on a rough stone foundation that's settled and all the posts are basically sitting on bare dirt now. So they're all, rotted and parts of it have settled anywhere from a foot or two up to three or four feet so a lot of the internal there's photos yeah side. i saw them yeah a lot of and do you want to bring those broken. up so you know, you'd see the rotted or broken what we'd be left with is same location 21st century barn based upon this style maybe some of the siding on it if somebody wanted to reuse it but otherwise it would be a 21st century structure, right? Yes, yes, it would take the form that we're looking at now. Then mm -hmm. the, the, the other uh, file that you have uh, shows the interior and that's, uh, that's for the moment, that's the, uh, uh, I don't think it's in there. It's in a PDF, uh, in a PDF of, a, of a PowerPoint. Okay, I gotta hunt through my email for that. Yeah, you but... brought you brought it up uh, for the in the staff uh, yeah. discussion. I know that's why I didn't send you it, sent it to again. us. It might be in the email you sent us. Okay. Have you talked to the um, co-op, the housing co-op, about this location and going together on something? Aren't they right no. here? Uh, you you mean uh, John? Um, uh, like the housing trust john hornick's uh, organization i don't know who has anything to do with it i just know there's a housing co-op right at simple gifts right there oh uh, well that time. was uh, that was a habitat for humanity building that's next door that we we were part involved in i was personally very heavily involved in it because uh, i have a an equally energetic presence with habitat that i do here Dan, are but, you talking uh, about Pine Street Habitat's Plaza? not going to take this one on. <laughs> um, Pat, did you have a question? I, I just want to clarify for myself that you've got these three options, but it's my understanding that the least expensive would be to recreate. But yep. do any of these, you need funds beyond what you have now? Say that again, sorry. That you, you would be looking for funds, whether it's CPA or a partner, in order to accomplish any one of these plans? Yes, we have zero. As I said, we don't have a story. Um, if you're raising money, you've got to, you've got to have a story. Um, it's, it sounds trite, but, but fundamentally, that's the energy that uh, makes the sun rise uh, if you're trying to raise money. And Absolutely. And we have, 
we 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 have all sorts of reasons, as we said, that we could we could get people excited about why the farmhouse should stay and why the farm itself should stay as a farm and not as a housing development. But this building, That's we sad. don't have. Uh, it it doesn't fit our story, which is sad because it, it it's a it's historically it's, it's it's a very nice story, and Greg helped us write it um, about how it. Uh, you know, the farms like this uh, were part of a, a renaissance of agriculture 150 years ago, when 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 the scientific uh, method was approached was applied to farming. It was done through places like Mass Agricultural College and this part of the world. And uh, but um, uh, these are the images that I was thinking would help explain why the the, the amount of salvageable material would be from a stru from the structural members point of view would be so um, uh, diminished. Is there a, in the future of, of the uh, community farm, is there any, is there a need for, I mean, is there a sort of positive need for any structure at all? I mean, this, this one is not useful to you, you said, but is there, you know, is there a farm need for a different or smaller structure? There's a farm need, but uh, speaking frankly, the mm -hmm. farm need is for the footprint, um, for the space that the building is on. It's not that we want to tear it down to get that, but the, uh, we would, uh, if that building was taken down, we would not plant grass there we would take advantage of the uh, the coverage that this building represents. That is that is valuable to the farm. Um, I suppose um, looking way down the road, you could think, well, maybe we, there could be a, a farm community kitchen or, um, or some way of, uh, of adding value. In other words, the farm grows tomatoes, you could create salsa, you need to, but the, the, all of that is more likely to happen um, in association with the farm store that's already there and the expansion of that, which is not on this location. Um, this also is a question that David is more, uh, uh, is probably more a better place to answer than me. But I know that we discussed this so much over so many years that I kind of know what he thinks and he knows what I think. But it's true that the, that the, uh, when we were successful with the other projects we've had because we, we roped in so many partners, we, we got, uh, Habitat involved. We got Interfaith Housing Trust uh, involved. We got um, various uh, energy organisations involved. We had annual fundraisers for five or six years that netted between twenty and thirty thousand. Um, they were huge amount of effort involved in doing it. But we have uh, upwards of um, six hundred and seventy. Uh, people or families that contributed. We've built all that around the stories that we've been able to tell up to now. But that 700 uh, people or families is not committed to this building. And I don't know any way of which I could pull them into that. And so it seems to me that the fate of this building, if it wants to be um, retained is is a is, is 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 would be driven by an outside body, someone else other than us. I mean, it is our building. Uh, in fact, this is a building that is not owned by Simple Gifts. I mean, it's 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 it was that clear to them that they in the lease arrangements where they were keen to own all of the rest of the buildings in some fashion. Um, the one, the buildings that are on the APR are, are, have a, an ownership interest. It's not a, a, a simple, straightforward ownership arrangement, but there's an ownership interest. The other buildings on the site, uh, in the in the non-APR portion of the site, they own. But this one, 
they they didn't and weren't interested in owning and NACF can, is the is, is, is the owner of this building and it is our responsibility. Um, but we don't have any way of uh, bringing any capital at the moment that I can think of to restoring this building. It's going to be a struggle just to find the the uh, the resources to take it down uh, take it down carefully. Um, Hetty, did you have yeah, a um, uh, um, I, I'm a member of the Simple Gifts um, farm. I, I go there all the time. Um, I park my car by that picture on the left. Um, yeah. You know, this this entryway into this space is compelling and beautiful, even though it's a very um, a structure that needs a lot of TLC. Um, I had a student when I was teaching who has made her living basically print, a printmaker doing prints of barns that look like this. There's a kind of sort of aesthetic that is interesting to her and 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 there's a you know it's I don't know what you call it um but you know buildings that are sort of somewhat decayed or or somewhat neglected and um I, I didn't know until now Bruce that that this building wasn't part of Simple Gifts Farm um and I'm, I'm really interested to hear what kinds of initiatives you've gone through to to you know to find uses for it um, I'm curious what it would look like if it wasn't there and there was this poured concrete floor that you were somehow using for other purposes. And, you know, part of me is like, oh no, that, 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 that would be awful. You know, it was part of the charm of coming to Simple Gifts is to see this, you know, the, the way you have made it, you've made this kind of, beautiful sense of of you know the turning circle and the parking and the store and the 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 the, the pathway to the to the fields and the you know the hoop houses and everything is so beautifully accessible to the community even if you're not a member or CSA member to, to sort of think about it like that so you know I, I used to work at Redgate Farm um, out in Buckland and Ashfield and they used they have a pretty important barn, completely different from this one. Um, and they use it for programming. Um, you know, salsa is made up the, up the road at Kitchen Garden Farm in Sunderland. Um, so why reinvent the wheel when, you know, it's already something that's being made locally, you know, is, could it be used for a, a place for programming, um, you know, I, I guess I'm all. All I'm saying is, in all of this, is let's not let's not give up the ghost at this point and say, oh, you know, okay, it it needs to go because I can't. While I know that you've done all these sort of scenarios and thought about all the other possible things that might happen, it seems to me that you know we're we're looking at something that's intact, um, even though it's very <laughs> structurally um, fragile. Um, how to go forward at this point, given that structural fragility is, is complicated and I'm not no engineer um, and it might be very expensive, but I, I feel like as a com commissioner, I, I, I want to see sort of all these little scenarios in little nuggets sort of presented so that we know that we've been through all of the programmatic conservation, you know, of materials or preservation of materials before we make other decisions. Um, Hattie, we, you, you've, this is, this is day one for you, but it's five years for <laughs> us. Um, there is also, there's no concrete floor there. So when I mention concrete, it would be what would happen if we were to reconstruct it. We would probably put it onto a solid foundation. As Dave said, this one has no foundation. It's gradually uh, collapsing uh, as, the, uh, as the wood that it sits on rots and then the, and the wood above it comes down and becomes 
the fountain, you know. Mm. So this is so the um, dirt floor, and so what could you make? Could we make objects out of it to sell? You know, um, at the farmers market, could it be? I don't know. Could it be somehow repurposed? Um, well, we we can we 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 can repurpose the siding probably. The roof um, material is metal is uh, over what was there previously is is kind of repurposed, but it's uh, it's a uh, it's going back into the steel making process. And these woods, as Dave says, we can um, you see it's, we've had uh, a number of people, not a large number of people, two or three uh, people come with a view to. Um, uh, buying the building for the salvage value of the material and and we've uh, seen uh, this uh, the buildings like this sometimes have value and and you and maybe the value is enough to cover the cost of taking them down but in this case um, the people who've looked at this have not seen uh, that kind of value even in the timber as, as, as the salvage value do you have so it's, um, do you have documentation of that, Bruce, that we could share um, with us? I um, the, the, the the two most recent folks who've looked at it happened after the two thousand and seventeen uh, uh, report that we sent in, but we have been trying, and, and I can I've got it uh, I've got it in notes, meetings, and 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 so forth, and emails of my own. I could uh, I could recreate that as an agenda and as an, append, an appendix or an addenda to the the report that we sent you four years ago. Um, and and uh, 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 Nate Malloy, when we talked, we, we, we did have a discussion uh, with uh, Chris Brestrup, uh, David Zomek, Ben and Nate Malloy. And Nate, uh, because he was part of the uh, applications that we made or the, the, when, when we were getting the funding for the farmhouse. And we did a Form B uh, historic analysis of the farmhouse. It kind of extended to the, 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 the barn, but we didn't write it up particularly. Um, and, uh, and there is a some documentation of the building as it exists, particularly a plan and so forth. Um, and uh, it was suggested that we could uh, make some documentary record of the building um, before it either was taken down or fell down. Um, but those are the, those, those are the, the uh, thoughts that we've had more recently. Jan, would you like to speak? Yeah, um, I'm afraid I'm one of the people who caused all that to happen because I was pushing so hard to save the barn. I was in at the beginning of your request for the house work because uh -huh. I've been on the commission, I think six years. Yes. Um, and I, I have a fondness for barns. Yeah. Um, but um, I was, I just was struck by your the narrative on your options page about a duplex for farm manager families. Um, is that not anything that really is useful at this point to create more well, housing? We, we created, uh, when we renovated the farmhouse, so the, the design and development of which uh, uh, came after the, the document that you've read, we, we um, managed to divide the farmhouse vertically into two <laughs> units that had three bedrooms each. And we created a small farm manager's apartment on the end of the farmhouse. So there are basically seven bedrooms and kind of three apartments, even though Rob Morrow would hit me with a bucket if he heard me say that, because it's really it would have to have a sprinkler system if it was really a, three, a triplex, but it, it functions nicely as a triplex. So we've sold, we've satisfied part of that particular. Um, oh, I see. So the document that we're reading is actually before that happened, because you were talking about 
having accommodating more, but you've already done that. I see. I didn't realize this was yes. a date. Yes, yeah. the, the, that document was written in association with the, uh, the study for the farmhouse. Oh, I see, 2018. The study for the farmhouse was done to identify just what of the farmhouse could be restored and what would be legitimately restoration and what would be remodeling and what would be renovation. And then so we went to, that's why we've got all these other parties involved in the farmhouse because right. the, the, the town contributed to the portion for restoration, but there was, there was remodeling work in, 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 in putting the firewalls in separation walls and mm -hmm. upgrading the electrical services and all that. So, um, that uh, that report on the barn was written as we were and that studying the farmhouse and then on the basis of that study we went and designed the farmhouse and then built it and so all of that was done in the subsequent two years to that report now i mean <clears throat> it's possible that i mean if if this if this was housing um um well, you see, the thing is that David and his family, David Tepper and his family, and Jeremy and his family, the two owners, the two farm owners, both have their own houses yeah, at the right. other end, uh, not on the farm, but adjacent, immediately adjacent. So 30 years from now, it's possible uh, that, let's say, Dave and Jeremy turn the lease over, and they, who knows, then then the, the new farmers might want to, <laughs> might have a use for a, some residential accommodation here in addition to the farmhouse. But that's so far into the future and so speculative that um, I, I can only um, postulate the narrative or postulate the notion that that would be a use in the future but it's certainly not a use now because, or a need now, because, because the, both the farmers were able to find houses that just came on the market right adjacent to the farm. It was rather wonderful. Um, one You're accommodating built. all the apprentices in the farmhouse. So there's no more apprentice housing needed. Uh, I don't think so. Dave, you could speak to that. What? There we go. What exactly was the question about the housing? Well, I was just saying, do you have enough for all the apprentices now? There's no, I'm just trying to think of ways you could justify a proposal for funding. Do you need more housing for apprentices or anything? Yeah, well, just to be perfectly, we, we haven't done a formal apprentice program in a, a couple of years. It's farm oh. employees now. Okay. Um, there, it, it ebbs and flows. Um, you know, last year during the COVID, business we were um you know the seven bedrooms you know people come and go you know we employ a lot of young people who are mobile most of the time we had six to seven um this year for some reason which we don't really understand um we've hired more people who happen to have housing for one reason or another in amherst you know each one has some different story about why they have housing in Amherst and we actually have a couple empty bedrooms in the house right now which is we're sort of scratching our head on that. yeah and actually on that we're um actually we have to make a decision soon we're probably going to talk to um or we, we we have been talking we'll probably confirm um talking to us you know we know all the faculty at UMass and the ag, various ag you know uh, instructors and probably open it up and see if we can get a couple um, UMass, you know, ag students of one kind or another to, to live there. And you know, part of living in the farmhouse there, people are required to, you have to work at the farm um, at least 10 hours a week in order to be allowed to, to live in that farmhouse. That's part of the whole arrangement. Um, the, our our uh, ownership um, arrangement with uh, NACF. So anyway, I'm, I'm getting off track here, but just to point out, we, um, it is more, it, you know, so far has been more than enough uh, housing for us. Okay, and thanks. I can imagine another, you know, 
a number of imaginary hypothetical situations five years, 10 years, 15 years from now, where it's possible we need more. I can, you know, have all kinds of grand ideas about maybe someday, but nothing remotely likely anytime in the next five to 10 years that I can think of whatsoever. Is there, um, do you have a particular timeline? Um, when, when, when does this structure um, kind of lose so much integrity that it is a real hazard? Uh, that's hard to say. I thought it was being progressively deteriorating, but I have to say that uh, uh, late, early this afternoon when I reviewed for this meeting and I looked at those photographs, Ben, that you put up in, the, uh, in that slideshow that were taken five years ago, and, it's, and, it, and I, I thought the, the, the barn was progressively deteriorating, but it looks to me that it's very similar to the way it was five years ago, which actually is blessedly reassuring to me because my sense was that the, uh, you know, I, 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 I'm fearful of parking my car, uh, Hetty, where you seem to be prepared to park your vehicle because I can see a board falling off or something. And, uh, but it's, uh, and which is just there, you, you would say, well, Bruce, you should be there with a hammer and nail and putting those boards back on. And, and you might be right. Jane, the answer is that this is not something that is, um, that we have a, a, an established schedule on where, but it's one of those things that I feel that we have to move forward with because it's very easy to, to say, well, maybe we'll just wait until next year or we wait until next year. And, and if I start doing that personally, then I, I'm, I'm the energy, frankly, behind all of this. And if, if my energy flags, um, I don't think there's anybody that I can see behind me who's going to come and deal with this. So it's got to be done while I'm still strong and fit. Um, there's reasonable prospects that that's going to be good for a while, but I don't know. And so I would like to move forward in the next 12 months to do something with this building, um, to secure it uh, in some way or other. Um, and one other question uh, for the, the three scenarios in, in your memo um, with their different uh, price points. Yeah. Does that include, is that only to either repair, restore or reproduce the, sh the shell? Yes. Okay. So any other functional insertion or amendment would be additional? Any electrician that arrives, any plumber that comes, any carpenter that puts any petitions or does anything inside it and so forth, that's all additional. And those numbers were generated uh, with the best will by people who know the business, uh, but they were um, they were done four years ago, so uh, this certainly dated in some fashion, I would expect. Um, so you would um, how can the historical commission best respond or best assist you right now? Um. I think um, I think we are um, we being my board colleagues and I are um, judging the uh, likely reception of a request for demolition mm -hmm. and. Uh, and we are seeing uh, just whether there is some alternative to that that we should be doing based on this conversation. And, um, and I'm not hearing it um, so far. 
I mean, I understand. I mean, Hetty's uh, observations about the the graphic aesthetic, the, the visual interest of these buildings, and I know because I've got drawings of dilapidated barns on my wall. I used to do many of these, and, and I've done one of this building as well. It, from a graphic standpoint, it's brilliant. But um, but that's but we, we we can't we can't we can't leave it there for that purpose. I don't think. I just feel that we're courting, uh, we're risking. Um, uh, a suit of irresponsible behavior or something of that sort. It's, I'm just fearful that the longer we leave it, the, the, the closer we may get to something happening that we will regret. And uh, so I think, um, in a sense, you don't have to do anything. I'm really not asking you for anything in particular. We are judging the, uh, the options from our point of view I think the ball is in our court. I think uh, it's for us to decide whether and why we shouldn't um, make an application to take the building down. And as Dave Zomack said, uh, to do so or suggested that to do so in a way that would salvage to the greatest extent possible the material of the building. And Dave uh, further said, for the purpose of uh, uh, using it around the farm. Dave's notion was that these old buildings, historically, or old buildings were taken down and parts of them found their way into new structures. And that was, that was, that was the historical method or one of them. And he thought that that seemed to be um, the way in which we might choose to behave here. And, and I thought that was a good idea. So we would be coming to you with a application to do that. And as I say, it probably manifests itself as, a, as an application for a, per, a demolition permit, but it would be done in a way that wouldn't have all of the brutality that's associated typically with demolitions. There's gonna be no swinging balls or bulldozers or buckets with big jaws on them that grab the whole building and kind of put it into a dumpster. We don't want to do it that way. Um, I think behind my earlier question about, um, you know, is there a need for any other structure, farm-related structure, was the thought that um, material that could be salvaged could could help to create something smaller that preserves some of that material on the landscape on which it sits now, um, if there's a purpose for it. Uh, but it would be in a way kind of a, a reuse with a little more integrity than um, using the siding on a variety of buildings. Although it, I think that's a fantastic idea to, to use the siding on other buildings, but um, it, it was just like a thought about if is there any use for a smaller structure that is almost well, that's a, a good idea a child uh, or a replacement kind of a child of the barn <laughs> i think in taking the building down as david said uh we could uh expect to salvage shorter uh, sh shorter useful members from longer present members mm -hmm. and that uh and and if I can find, uh, I used to have some reasonable relationships with the Timber Framers Guild. Uh, Ted Benson, for example, is a friend and, uh, and others are as well. And, and it, it's, it's just possible that we could uh, um, figure out a, a, a raising or some, some way to build a, a single story structure that has about a quarter or, or or twenty percent of the area that that one has, but uses those beams, and we could probably figure that out once we took it down and and we had a an array of beams, uh, posts and beams and so forth. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I I like that idea. Well, from your Let point of view, just, it's a suggestion, but I think it could be turned into an idea. Let me just add that you know, in principle, I mean. If you'd care to come out, I could show you many examples. I'm, I'm, uh, 
40 plus years of experience of of a thrifty farmer i <laughs> i could show you my piles i save every possible piece of wood and every long piece that i have a short piece off of and yeah and stuff i've scrounged from one building to use in another i'm um if anybody cared to look, I, I could come out and give you a short tour and give you many, many examples. So Dave, Dave, what do you think about uh, Jane's suggestion that we might be able to, it mightn't happen immediately, but that we could- uh... No, it's not likely to happen. Well, one thing, I mean, there's, you know, a, a little bit of background. Bruce has been actively pushing it on this, you know, for the, whatever it is, six or seven years, but we've had many conversations about this barn you know, in the 15 years since we've been here. And I don't know when it was, but one thing that came up that I've always loved the idea of is, um, you know, some, at least some of you have been up on the, our, what we call our Festival Hill, a little ways up the farm where we have uh, a lot of events. It wasn't my idea, and I don't remember whose it was, but I loved it, is a sort of a smaller, since we have so many public events up there, a smaller, post and beam more open you know gazebo kind of structure up there which is sort of the you know sort of the social center of the farm in a way okay so now we even have That's a place where we can sort of thing. Suggestion. yeah you know both those ideas are exactly what i was kind of thinking about which was the agreement we have with hampshire college about a barn on their property was that they would not take it down, but when they had the funds, they would just restore the exterior and just lock it so nobody could go inside, just, just stabilize it basically, so that yeah. that romantic landscape would still be there. Yeah. And that if at some point in time a use came about, you know, it would be structurally sound and then they could do whatever they wanted to be inside later. And I was thinking about the idea <laughs> of, a, of a pavilion or something where you just restored the the frame and the roof, but you didn't worry about windows and some of the walls and stuff. It'd basically be a four post or probably eight, 16 post, whatever, you know, yeah. open air roofed space. And you could have one facade, maybe the one that is the most romantic, the one that's seen the most intact and keep the best siding and then and then leave the rest of it. Or it could even be smaller, as Jane suggested, you could do a reduced version of that, but you'd have yeah. somewhat of that look, you know. The look is, more, but let me be clear, if you've, you know, what we've been talking about and it's covered in, in detail in some of the written reports, there is no restoring that barn because virtually, maybe not every, but virtually every timber in that barn is bad. The only, you know, there, there's no replacing pieces to keep even any part of it. The only, you know, short of, you know, half a million dollars based on five-year-old prices, the only remotely reasonable way to reuse it is to take it down completely and reuse those pieces for something else. So there's no support beams that could be reused anyway. You'd have to put in new ones. You but could take it down and reuse them. You but could do a simple version and then clad it with some of the old materials. Jen, I think that the, the story or the example you've given with Hampshire is, uh, is, and we've got a couple of these types of barns further up in the property where they're, they're fundamentally uh, solid. And, yeah. uh, and, 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 and so long as you can keep them dry, you know, keep a good roof on them, then you've got a, a structure that you can wait out. Mm -hmm. But this one is not this one is like not. that. Um, you have to imagine that the posts that are holding them up are, are rotten at the base and are rotten, are broken at the joints, and the beams substantially are, are either both of that, but uh, rotten or they're broken. And in fact, mm -hmm. it's just bro snapped in half in the middle. And, uh, and there's a number of those beams that are like that snapped uh, and, uh, and, and one imagines that there might be some others that are about to do that, um, but nonetheless, the, this, the structure is, is irredeemable um, it, without 
replacing those beams mm. or, um, or making them those, making it much much shorter by using them in halves like Jane had the idea yes well that but you'd have to take it apart to do that right, you wouldn't right, right. be able to uh, so taking it apart and, and finding the pieces of wood that have value have integrity the the 10 foot portion of a 16 foot beam the 10 foot portion of a 12 foot post or something like that that's what we would be doing and there may be one or two pieces where the full length of them is useful but if we were looking to to a smaller building on a 10 foot module and we decided to use the 15 foot timbers to do that that's why jane's suggestion probably has legs because we would be able to build a smaller building with a smaller scale and a smaller grid using um, the material, the structural materials. We, as we said, we've already thought that we would use the cladding materials, mm -hmm. but Jane's suggestion and, 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 and uh, driven by your, your vision and, and, and David's uh, notion uh, is a way of which we can also conceivably um, give some additional use to the structural members of the building. Dave, you could use a smaller building for storage or some sort of like either even machinery or right? I mean, uh, there's possibility, you know, a lot of possibilities, but not necessarily there. I mean, it's a, mm. it's a really lousy place for machinery storage right in the mm. middle of, you know, what we've worked on over the years is separating the active farming part as much as we can. You know, we're a farm that's wide open to the public, just people through there all the time, but we've really worked at containing the farming, all the farming activity and the innate, you know, messiness and dangerousness of it and keeping people somewhat away from it, or if they have to go through it, channeling them in a way as much as we can in light of all the <laughs> restrictions we have, but yeah, it would, yeah. And we've got another barn uh, further into the middle of the property that, that we are uh, currently working to turn into a machinery uh, garage or, or yeah. story shed. It's not it, at the moment. It's got uh, all sorts of historic antique uh, farm equipment that's kind of bogged in there. It's it's uh, it seems to have settled into the sand, and we have uh, we have to dig it out. But once all that's dug out then the building will have some use and, uh, and it's in a location and it's a scale and the shape and everything where it'll be very useful for that purpose. And we will Maybe we need a little, little Amherst Farm Museum. A we have a little there. Amherst Farm Museum up there already. The, unfortunately, a lot of the yep. pieces of equipment are, un, are not, you know, are out in the rain. Mm. <laughs> well, this little new building maybe could be something. Yeah. I, I hope uh, I, we probably ought to wrap up this um, conversation for now, but um, you know, we're, we're all really very interested in what's happening uh, with the North Amherst Community Farm and admire, certainly admire the, the um, unquestioned success of the restoration of the farmhouse and um, hope that maybe a couple of these thoughts will be useful to you. I mean, I myself am sensitive to the extraordinary expense of restoration for an or for a small organization that doesn't necessarily serve their immediate needs um, uh, but I hope I hope a couple of these thoughts can be carried away and considered a, a little more well, I thank you for your um, for the for the hour that you've given us, and uh, and I think we we certainly do have something that I think can improve the uh, the process that we maybe were thinking of uh, up until sixty minutes ago. Well, um, please come back if uh, you know. Mm -hmm. when at any time when we can be of more help. Well, I think we'll be back because I think we have to come back uh, to to uh, to 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 uh, pursue the process that we've been discussing. 
Um, we'll just see if we can make it as um, as as, uh, as least traumatic as possible. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you to the rest of the board members today. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you. I guess I guess we leave. Um, <laughs> although you 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 usually demote uh, the panel, you demote us from being panelists. So, uh, but I'm gonna I'm gonna skive before you do that. So thank you all very much, and I Thanks, appreciate it. And and I'll talk to my board colleagues later. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Bye bye. All right, I'm looking, I've got too many windows open. Now I'm looking back for the agenda. Um, oh, yeah, I can pull it up here. Writer's Walk updates, the next steps. Yeah, so thank you, Jane. Um, so as some of you know, hopefully all of you know by now, the uh, Writer's Walk signs, I think uh, seven of them have been installed after a long process <laughs> to get to here. I took a few pictures uh, yesterday just so I could share them. Um, there's a, this is the Baker, standard Ray Baker house on Sunset um, on Amity Street uh, downtown, Noah Webster house um, on Spring Street, the Todd house. And then uh, where's this on Harkness Road a Goodale house, an Eastman house. Um, I almost had a car accident when I was driving down Harkness and saw that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I drove up to North Amherst today and uh, I did confirm the one on Market Hill Road was installed as well um, for right. Robert Francis. And yeah, so it's really exciting. Um, and uh, Jan and I have been talking about kind of where do we go from here? Obviously, this is a uh, there's a lot of interest in this project um, around the town. It's been, uh, you know, been discussed for I think like almost ten years now. People have been asking every so often, ask about it, and we've finally been able to tell them, you know, it, it's the uh, signs have been installed and the the writers walk is here. So I think. Um, we had an, or Jan had an idea of like having like kind of a launch event or launch party, some, some sort of like formal uh, event to uh, kind of announce the, the, the start of the writer's walk. Um, and, uh, you know, we have um, those pamphlets that I, uh, that we developed and um, I've started, you know, I've put some in town hall, I put some at the library, I put some at bookstores, uh, the, the visitor center that, you know, where the Chamber of Commerce is. Um, uh, and so there's kind of thinking about this launch party, whatever we, we want to call it, kickoff event. Uh, um, I was thinking you know, August is a tough time, especially in a, in a, in a, in a college town. Um, not many people are around and everyone's kind of gearing up for the semester. So um, I was thinking, you know, September or October might be a, a more apt time. And also that will give us a little bit, we need, we need a little bit more time to get the, the last four signs in the ground. Um, right. So I just want to make sure, fine. just want to make sure we have uh, enough time to do that. So so are um, we clear with Amherst College then, or is DPW able to put them in? They just haven't found the time, or are we still held up by Amherst College? Uh, we're not held up by Amherst College per se. I just we need to, uh, the, you know, people have been on vacation. We just I just need to. Um, I, I have a time to that I'm going to talk with uh, their facility or campus operations team next week to uh, just in terms of exact placement. Yeah, stuff. confirm and then. Um, a certain executive director of uh, the Dickinson Museum I need to talk to as well about <laughs> where to place yeah, where, to, where, where, to, where to place that sign. But uh, no, Jane, Jane, Jane and I will discuss that. Because um, I don't want to call the bookstores um, and I'm not real happy about the cards being out until they're all in place. Because if somebody tries to do a tour, they're going to yeah. come up at, you know, empty. Uh, at various spots. So I'm waiting to call the bookstores until we have a date for the launch and we know they're all in and people are actually taking the tour. Mm -hmm. 
you know, and I'm hoping Amherst Bookstore will actually do a window display to go with it. Um, you know, we could even do a little poster or something to go in their window with the books. Mm -hmm. um, and that, but I'll call, you know, Northampton and South Hadley and all those bookstores once we know what's going on. Mm -hmm. um, should we talk about the potential dates? There is uh, September, there are a couple event, of events I know of that could possibly be good pairings. One is the block party. I assume, I assume the bid is doing another block party. Yeah, I'm there sure. is going to be a block party this year. Um, I have the date somewhere in an email, but um, for the block party, we have the option of maybe having like a, a, a tent like one of the you know there's a lot of different vendors and stuff like that usually september the, 17th yep yeah. That's, yeah that's what i recall as well um there's also the uh you know the art uh, art nights uh, i think they do used to do those like one thursday a month right um if we could maybe try to coordinate with that if there uh maybe i can get try to figure out what the october night is um, the poetry festival the first thursday of the month but there hasn't been one in quite some time been okay but, but it but it was the first thursday of every month I, I think they're having a little difficulty maintaining their organization especially after such a long hiatus yeah yeah um it's the poetry night in fall the the poetry festival, oh, festival, museums poetry festival, um, but that it's probably going to be largely virtual, oh. or or hybrid at least. Mm -hmm. But maybe we could have some sort of kickoff thing that could be zoomed. Yep. Um, for, and for people who do come, it would give them something to attend because it was certainly fit since there are poets in the tour. Yeah. It might be kind of interesting to have a little Amherst Writers Walk bookshelf. Maybe the library could help. With yeah, we mm -hmm. suggested that to, to the library. Would, would public the Amherst Public Television, Public Media, whatever we call it, um, would they be willing, or if we did the photography for it, to to do a program on the Amherst Writers Walk and have it televised on local television? I bet they would. Yeah. Yeah. Is the poetry festival, the part that's not virtual, going to be held at the Emily Dickinson House at the homestead? uh most likely not uh, okay. because the the Renovation. house has to be closed and and the some of the um access to the grounds will be a little bit restricted so. okay i've just been trying to think of if if it weren't like during a block party with a tent downtown if we actually had it at one of the houses yeah where there's enough room to park and to spread out on the lawn and stuff. I had thought in front of the Boltwood Inn would make the most sense, but it's not really a house house. I mean, there are others that have space, but that would be so obvious because the common is right there. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's possible that we could do something on the grounds at the, at the museum, um, depending on what the college's um, policy on public access to its property mm -hmm. in that and that's evolving so. yeah what's the date for the poetry festival is it it's ongoing the, or uh 20th through the 26th of october of september september okay. with most you know the the kind of the um kind of highlight high profile events are close to the 26th. Mm -hmm. If we were at the block party, what would that look like? We'd just have a table where it's at Amherst Historical Commission and we'd hand out stuff about the writer's walk. What would be the, it would just be to publicize this? 
Yeah, like uh, in years past, um, like the, you know, for example, the Energy and Climate Action Committee will have like a tent and they'll sure. be there to be there to talk to people about, you know, sustainability in Amherst or something like that. Um, the, you know, Transportation Commission sometimes has a tent or a booth to, you know, survey people about biking or something like that. So, you know, do commission, can different committees and commissions and boards do sometimes have tents for various reasons um but you know if you've ever been to the books by these authors to have on the table to hand out or something right right you know, old old copies that people don't want or something mm -hmm. um so yeah that's just one one idea i always thought the block party would be like in addition to an actual like event for mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. for the writer's walk um I think that it would be good to advertise it. I also think that we might be targeted by people saying, why are you letting downtown deteriorate into these big modern buildings? And it's your fault that this happened. Uh, so I think we'd have to be prepared to defend ourselves to say, look, this is our only purview. We can only put in a delay, that kind of thing. I think we'd be spending yeah. a whole evening explaining. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. <laughs> well, that, that could be. <laughs> useful engagement with the public. Yeah, I mean, it could be good, but I wouldn't want to stand there alone. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Unless I was wearing armor. <laughs> we won't let you do it alone, Dan. Yeah. Right. We'd, um, have to, we'd have to make it a meeting if we were all there. Yeah, I was actually just wondering that. <laughs> um, two, two of us is not a quorum, two at a time or something. <laughs> That's right, yeah. Well, um, it sounds like the, uh, it does sound like, it seems like the end of September would be a good, kind of time time wise you know early late september early october um so and i think the in terms of like finding a gathering space downtown around one of the signs i think yeah either the grounds of the museum or in front of the common mm -hmm. um would make the more most sense um and you know i imagine we would like you know present the signs, have some people talk, and then maybe just do a, 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 a loop of the ones in the immediate town center. Um, Tell BPW to put a really strong sign in where we do it so I can break a bottle of champagne over it. <laughs> the post. There, there are at least four in really easy walking distance. Yes. Yeah. Helen yeah. Hunt. Um, the museum and the and Webster and then um, the one we just looked at on three, the two on Spring Street, both on Spring Street. So one, two, three, yeah. four, five, six, six in close walking distance. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be good. Okay. Um, so Ben, are there uh, considerations that you need to look into to, to firm up, for us to firm up a date or should we? Choose something now, or would you uh, be willing to incorporate it into the poetry festival? Because if so, we can work more directly with that. But if you think it might be awkward, then we'll go at other time. I think the big unknown there is. I mean, I I think it would be great to incorporate it into the poetry uh, festival. I think the big unknown there is if we want an in-person event, whether museum grounds or. Mm -hmm. Well, we could decide later where it is, but I mean, you, yeah. we could still be part of the festival and then whether it's a few blocks away or at the museum doesn't, mm -hmm. wouldn't really affect it, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, true. Yeah. And then what would we think for like, is this a weekend? Is this an evening? Is it afternoon? Is it, I would, I would think, I would personally think like a week, weekday, like, E evening Week weekday uh, evening is really good having done a lot of dinner tours for historic yeah. house museums myself um yeah yes we should also serve some food we should yeah, i was thinking that what about like on the 24th and then people could um give patronage to downtown restaurants afterwards or something mm -hmm. friday just, yeah some kind of can we maybe there'd even be a 10 percent off voucher or something i bet the bdr i bet the the bid would be interested in this too i can't imagine that they wouldn't want to 
assist or yeah. brainstorm yeah. with us. Yeah. Um, I, I feel like they've done so much. At least make free during the pandemic. You know, I, I'd love to see. Uh, that mm -hmm. part of things um if that's if that's convenient or appropriate yeah they could have their office open at the mm -hmm. same time if we were on the common mm -hmm. or or maybe the bookstore is the the way to host it i i don't know um there's so many uh unknowns if we did the bookstore we could do it in front of the webster sign mm -hmm. and have the bookstore open their doors and have a big window display and I mean they might like that because they could sell some things. It's actually pretty soon. We're in the middle of July and it's two months away. Mm -hmm. So you think the fr Friday the 24th? Of, of like September? A night people might want to come out. I don't know. Yeah. Or the first Friday of October. What's that, Ben? I don't have my calendar. It's, open, the, it's the first actually. Yeah. That's the first. <laughs> A Thursday, or, a Thursday or Friday evening is good. You're more likely to get people coming out. Um, is that um, too late in the festival dates for the, your programming? Would you want it on the first night or would it be okay that it were five days into your festival, Jane? Um, October 1st would be after the festival. No, I mean the 24th. Oh, the 24th. Because you start on the 20th, right? So Yes, and it kind of grows over the week. Um, the 24th might be a really busy. programmed already. So yeah. it, we might, I don't know, maybe Tuesday or something. Uh, or Thursday. Okay. I'll check, I'll check with the, the um, program folks to I, I'm not sure they have a schedule for this year yet, but we can look back at the schedule for last year, mm -hmm. which was all virtual. So, and okay. I'll, I'll see where things fall there. Um, okay. For time, early evening or, yeah, okay. Yeah. So people can go to dinner afterwards. Yeah. 5 536 or, you know, 530, quarter of six, you know. We're okay. not talking about something very long. We're just giving people a taste. Right. Okay. Yeah. The, yeah. The, yeah. Um, the writer's walk usually starts at five. And I think it, the idea is that people can get there at, after a day's work or, and then, you know, make a social evening of it by going out to dinner or meeting friends or whatever. So mm -hmm. five well, o'clock doesn't, what starts the, the, right, the, the um, arts night. Oh, arts, arts night. Oh, okay. Did I say writer's walk? Arts yeah. Night. I'm Arts. sorry. Okay. Yeah, that's a, coordinating with that same time is probably a good idea because yeah. people are used to it. Yeah. Right. But we'd have to look at your festival programming too. Right. Mm -hmm. So yeah, okay. I can take care of that this this week. Um, well, let's get on to project updates. And first off is the Jones Library Preservation Restriction, and we have a. Um, a, a final final? Um, basically, I, I made the changes uh, that uh, um, you all uh, recommended or, you know, asked for uh, last meeting, the, you know, basic things, just the spelling of Jan's last name and the, <laughs> the, the tense, uh, there were some issues with the tense, um, you know the work has been done already so I was I changed that um and where it stands now is essentially the the uh, Chris Brestrup the planning director she presented to the library trustees uh in early July I forget the exact day um you know they 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 had a few questions uh you know just about the scope of the uh restriction and the um and also still, you know, con concern brought up concerns about the indemnity clause. Um, and so I think we're, we're looking at um, basically like, you know, we want the historical commission to obviously sign the final, final, final version. Um, and so we're working on, uh, you know, 
if there's changes that need to be made to that clause, we'll, we'll do it. Um, but I think there's kind of some conversations happening with the town attorneys, the library trustees, the uh, and getting a better handle on kind of um, the insurance issues. Um, but okay. I think we'll we'll sort that out um, hopefully in the coming weeks and then be able to present a final version to the commission to sign. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you. Um, yeah, are there any questions or we can move on to the next update? I think having the, you know, those things about indemnification and insurance that, that really we can't answer. Yeah. Great to have those taken care of and then we'll, and then we'll give it a last look. Mm -hmm. okay. Great. Um, then the bylaw. Yeah, so with the bylaw, um, we have, uh, I have some dates that I've been able to confirm um, where we will um, basically first present, uh, there's a date in August, I'm looking at my calendar, sorry, August 4th um, is a Wednesday. The uh, planning board is meeting that night and uh, we can present the bylaw changes to the planning board just to get their feedback and um, thoughts and you know comments overall about the proposal um, and then that would lead into uh, August 23rd which is a Monday um, that evening is that there's a town council meeting um, and it, it's our hope that we could actually formally you know present the bylaw that night and that would be like you know the formal the beginning of the formal process to uh for the adoption of the bylaw where they would then refer it for to to uh their subcommittees for recommendation and and it would it would really start start the clock by which they need to adopt it the the meeting with the planning board is just more like a uh uh to get their feedback but the 23rd with the town council is like a uh, the, the presentation of the bylaw. Um, and it's, you know, I, I think speaking for the planning department, it's our hope that, you know, it's kind of jointly done by the staff and by commission members. Um, yeah. And I know we, we discussed that last time, so. Okay. Um, um, I think, uh, Jan, it, at least you and I need to get together. Yeah, I've been gathering all the old agendas and minutes and versions so we can sit down and construct a narrative. And I've been taking notes as I go. So I don't think it'll be too hard. We don't need to give them every blow by blow thing that happened. But um, there is a lot. There are quite a few years of things out there. So um, anytime you want to get together, just let me know. And I'll pull all that for both of us and we can do it. OK. Um, so for me, a, a weekend is a little easier. Is that possible? That's fine. That's no problem. Okay. So I could do this Saturday or Sunday afternoon and next weekend also. Uh -oh. Either one is fine. Just tell me. Next uh, Sunday, the 25th, I might not be here, but every other one of those is fine. Okay. How about, um, how about Sunday, the 18th? At okay. 2.30? Perfect. You can come here. Okay. Got it. Great. Cool. Yeah. And then, um, yeah, I think with the planning board, you can assume, you know, there's maybe, uh, you know, 10, 15 minutes for presentation and then you know 15 minutes for discussion and then uh usually public comment so you know could all be you know 45 minutes to an hour does that include the plan uh, the um, planning staff or is that just us i i would be there you know uh, chris, chris Brestrup, you know staffs the planning board when you talk you. about 10 to 15 minutes for presentation are you talking about all of us together that much time are you going to talk or are you just going to be there and we'll make the presentation? Oh, um, 
Yeah, I mean, uh, I've I've given the presentation in the past, um, so I'm happy to do so in in conjunction with with you and um, Jane. But um, yeah, we can figure that out. But yeah, I, I think it would be ten to fifteen minutes for the whole presentation. Okay. Well, in that case, would it be better for the three of us to get together? Yeah, that might be good. Weekends are a, tough not, for me. Not on a, not on a Sunday. <laughs> uh, okay. Yeah. I well, mean, if well, you if you if you all want to start you know, meet and you know just to coordinate and uh, and and whatnot, that we can uh, have I can the three of us can have a follow up meeting maybe. We had just talked about wanting to have some historical depth to this so that yeah we can show them that we've been working on it a long time and we had some of the ideas that they've already suggested we should have done. We had those and for this reason we rejected it or we worked through it, you know, because it just feels important to yeah, yeah. show that this has been on the desk and worked through. And so that's why I just wanted to pull a lot of data out of the old minutes and stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, why don't we do this? Jan and I will get together. One of the things we'll do when we, before we get together is look at your presentation. And yep. Um, yep. If, if you think there are areas that members of the commission should cover in your presentation, you can let us know that. If there are areas that are not in your presentation that you think will be of interest to the planning board, you can, you know, let it, let mm -hmm. us know that too. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds good. All right. Um, and um, sorry, I just had a thought and then it escaped me. Oh, um, the the town's attorney um, is is also reviewing the bylaw. That's kind of just a standard procedure uh, for new bylaws um, that, for zoning, and especially with this one going from zoning to general bylaw. There's some, you know, we just want to make sure we're everything is. Um, meets the requirements and is can be held up and stuff like that so uh i i think he was on vacation last week joel um bard but uh i had asked him to get it comments to me by tuesday and he uh, did not get those so <laughs> i will uh continue yeah, push him on that because if you hear anything egregious tell us right i know away. We're gonna have to yeah exactly that. yeah yeah i just have a question um Obviously, um, Jane and Jen, you are the ones who are going to make the presentations, both to the planning board and to the town council. But would you want the presence of the other commission members of the town council meeting? For moral support. Not, not to speak, but just solidarity. I think so, yeah. I think it would help to show that we're all involved. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You two got the, or you thrust the other three of you get those dates. What were the dates? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're all like not looking eager here. Uh, <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm talking about the 23rd of August. Oh, just the 23rd. Okay. Right. Because I don't planning. know that it makes sense to go to the planning board meeting. Do you, Ben? Um, well, I was going to suggest the planning board is where there's probably going to be more rich discussion that happens. Um, you know, it's a longer period of time to just focus on the nitty gritty details of the bylaw. Typically, in my experience with presenting to town council, you know, they have like four hour marathon meetings where they cover a mind boggling amount of material. Um, and typically, if they know they're going to refer something to their subcommittee they'll kind of hear the presentation talk about it very briefly and then uh refer it um just to kind of keep the meeting moving so just to you know with that in mind um the planning board might be where there's more you know engagement with the material of the the bylaw but the town council is where you know they might they you know they might want to see that there's uh support behind behind it i guess but so are you suggesting that we part that we be not participants but but whatever the term is that we we okay. acknowledge our presence at both the planning board meeting and the town council meeting well yeah i mean it might be the kind of thing where jane and jan could say you know 
and we're joined by you know members of the commission legions of yeah yeah (laughs) what were the the dates of times again Ben? um august 4th at 6 30 is the planning board and then uh august 23rd probably at somewhere between 6 and 10 p.m is the town council (laughs) Okay. Yeah. And are these still on Zoom, Ben? Correct. Yep. Okay. Thank you. It, I think it changes over on the 21st of September. Not sure, but I think I read that somewhere. That's when the protocol comes to an end. Remote meetings for the state. It would it could be helpful for commissioners to attend the planning board meetings so there are just more ears open to uh i don't know in case we need to reconvene the meaning (laughs) the meaning of something uh so ben you'll send us the link those meetings please yeah yeah certainly yeah i mean uh you know like that i will send them but you know they're also always posted on the town's uh calendar but yes thank you Okay, so now we're on to um, uh, expanding the local historic district. Is um, anybody taking minutes? Uh, <laughs> I just saw that. that. I've, I've been taking notes, but um, we'll have to reconstruct. I think. Yeah. From the recording. Okay. Uh, I was just thinking that, like during the planning board meeting that would be useful to have somebody other than two of us who are presenting like taking jotting down things that people say questions mm-hmm. they ask us and points they make so that later we could go back over those before the town council you know with some some of the other one other member would do that like, and it, it, it'll be recorded also Ben right yeah I mean for the planning board yeah it's always recorded the the there's minutes taken at the planning board meetings but I I in you know when I when I'm presenting a bylaw to the commission I I'm always jotting down notes that of of comments um but uh yeah I guess the more people doing that the better so if we all try to to do that yeah we won't catch everything but we'll together we will yeah it's just you know sometimes you have different perspectives and takes on what people yeah, say and what yeah. they're asking. It might be nice to be able to kind of put our heads together about that. Um, so let's move on to the local historic district question. So ben, do you want to kind of summarize? Um, at, at our last meeting or two, Hetty and I were um, appointed by the Historical Commission to be part of an ad hoc committee. Um, we then met with Susanna um, Muskrat, Muskrat um, just to get some background from her perspective. And um, then uh, we had conversation, uh, Hetty and I were, were, I'm not sure what these terms are, whether we were for participants or guests, but we were at the, the local historic district meeting last month. Um, to discuss uh, the interest of the Historical Commission in preserving the historic homes on the west side of of, uh, North Pleasant Street. And and, um, they agreed to uh, appoint two members to an ad hoc committee and that Jane and their chairperson would write a letter to that effect. However, Ben has since, and I'll let you take it over from here, Ben, but I'll just say one more thing. After the historic commission meeting, or between after meeting with Susanna, I did an inventory of all those properties um, and and have sent that to Ben, and I think he's going to share it with you. But I Mm -hmm. also pulled the assessor cards for every property and the macros information, the form Bs. And so I have a file. It's this thick now. Um, I, I tried to scan all of the assessor cards and, and macros information by property and send it to Ben today. I think that I mostly succeeded, but my scanner was skipping things and then I had to go back and then 
the files were huge. And, and so I, I had to send it in two parcels to Ben, but I do have all that information. I've done that work. And I think that, that, Ben can take over about actually how the, what this process should look like, because the idea is that it should be the um, Lincoln Sunset Local Historic District that is promoting the inclusion of those properties. It mm -hmm. would be a whole different process for an ad hoc committee. It, it, there's a whole different process and it, and it would be, be uh, counterproductive for us to start with that. Um, so Ben, you can you can make that part more clear to everybody. Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Pat. Um, so yeah, just to reiterate, the at their last meeting, the local historic district commission did uh, you know vote and you know voice their strong support for this uh, effort to um, study the enlargement of the Lincoln Sunset District. Um, and in my kind of subsequent research. I kind of combed through, uh, I think, what is it, chapter 40C, section three of the Mass General Law is kind of f focuses on, uh, it's the Historic District Act, uh, formally, um, and it, it does lay out the process for uh, enlarge, the enlargement of a, a district. You know, there's, you know, a process for starting a district, enlarging a district, shrinking a district, removing a district. So there's all, all it's all spelled out. Um, and uh, essentially the, you know, when, when a district is, is first formed, there's uh, a, a, a study committee that comes together and there's kind of a, a you know, a, a, a recipe, if you will, for like who is part of that committee. I think you're supposed to have an architect, a realtor, people from the district, um, some, something to that effect. And then they study study the the, uh, the the formation of the district, do all the research inventories, um, and then ultimately that report needs to be well needs to be adopted by the the legislative body in the town. So town, town meeting or town council in our case town council, um, and then it uh, it needs to be accepted by Ma Massachusetts Historic Commission, um, and so they. Uh, for for the enlargement of a district, um, because there's already an existing local historic district com commission, for the enlargement of a district, the LHDC become is the study committee or acts as the study committee or un undertakes the work. Um, and you know, I think if we were to do something different, like you know, have some sort of ad hoc committee where it's, you know, a few members of this commission, a few members of that commission you know, it comes together, it might not be like formally accepted by Mass Historic because they really do lay out the process. Um, so what I suggested to Pat and Hetty was, you know, essentially the LHDC would kind of uh, drive the process or, you know, you know, it would happen at their meetings where the, you know, process plays out. But you know, like always, anyone is able to attend those meetings, their public meetings, um, and certainly Pat and Hetty and whoever can contribute research findings, comments uh, to that process, and and be um, engaged in the process. But you know, when it comes to actually voting on things and you know, kind of holding meetings, it, it would be the local historic district commission um, doing that. Uh, and um, yeah, I think I, I, my next step for me, you know, I'm here to be kind of a uh, technical advisor, I guess, re resource. And so I'm going to look a little bit more closely at actually what these studies look like. You know, I think there's a formula for what you need, you know, different headings for sections that you need. Um, I think what Pat's done is a great start already with all the inventories. You know, it's not a huge area at all, um, relatively speaking. It's a handful of homes. Um, so uh, it's definitely going to be work, but it's uh, not a, a tremendous undertaking. Um, and How far have we gotten with the joint ad hoc committee? Is it formed? Is it meeting? Because it seems from... Um things in the paper and opinion pieces on various sites online that it's really heating up and we're working against the clock. 
but Jan, you know, the whole point of what Ben is saying is that having a joint ad hoc committee is counterproductive, that we need to lend our efforts as citizens to the local historic district of Sunset so they can be the leaders. Oh, I thought the ad hoc committee would be like coordinating with them the work that we well, need to do. Um, there, there is there. I think the idea of an ad hoc committee is dead in the water. Oh, okay. Because because it it it's not going to it's it's going to be counterproductive to to what the legis legislative regulations say about who should lead this charge. But mm -hmm. I'm more than happy to attend their meetings and be invited as a okay. guest or participant. In order to I keep think, the process clicking along. Right, and I think Hetty is also, but but I really did initiate, um, there are a dozen or more properties that are of historic consequence. Sure. Um, and I started with the building that houses Miss Saigon next to CVS because that's a, like a Queen Anne 18 yeah. something house and then went one from there to Triangle Street. Um, and almost every single one of those properties along that western side of Pleasant Street from, from like 110, 2, 3, whatever the last one is, mm -hmm. um, have some historic significance. Um, and even though they've been built out like in the Saigon building, the, the, the first structure is quite evident if you look at the yeah. Uh, Absolutely. and everything else. So I, I think what Ben is saying is, is that he's, he, Ben, you're probably going to talk to the um, Lincoln Sunset Local Historic District to explain this to them as well. But please share with them the work that I've done because there's oh, yeah, no reason definitely. for anybody else to spin their wheels doing it. Um, but that would give them a good start to identify the properties. And then you will help them and Hetty and me to understand what next and how we can be helpful to them. So uh, Jennifer and Susanna are here uh, and perhaps, and I see Jennifer has her hand up, perhaps we could bring them yes. into the conversation. Right, yeah. mm -hmm. Hi. Hi, Jennifer. Hi, hey, Jennifer. Yeah, hi. Hi, Hetty. And hi. Hi, everybody. Um, yeah, so I'm Jennifer Taub. I uh, chair the local historic district commission and live in the North Prospect Lincoln Sunset uh, local historic district, which borders, um, you know, the 122 through 336 North Pleasant Street, um, all those properties. And so I just, on behalf of the local historic district commission, we really appreciated uh, Hetty and Pat's coming and joining our last meeting. And we voted unanimously that we would like, you know, to, we were gonna say form the study committee. And then I actually learned after that we are the study committee. So that's actually great news because it means we don't have to form something, we're already intact. And we um, absolutely, you know, welcome and appreciate all the, the work you've already done, Pat, and all of you, you know, we certainly, you know, want to co collaborate, although it sounds like that the legal sort of responsibility is with the local historic district commission, but we're inclusive <laughs> and, um, you know, and that's really uh, terrific, all the work that, that you've already done. And we would, uh, I mean, I guess speaking personally, because uh, my husband um, kind of chaired the study commission when we were forming the local historic district in Lincoln Sunset um, North Prospect, and they initially wanted that those properties on um, North Pleasant Street to be part of it. So we're very, just so you know, we we are as committed as you are. We're we're very receptive to that, and it would be um, terrific to make that happen. And Jennifer, this is Pat. Um, I, I'm committed to participating, to, to being a guest as you are tonight with the Amherst Historic Commission. I'm, I'm committed to um, zooming in and when the moment comes when I can be helpful or can join the discussion with your local historic district to, to help promote this. Um, and I, I'm assuming that Ben, if he hasn't already, will pass along all the inventory materials that I produced um, so that you have you can start there. You won't have to spend time right. assigning someone doing it. 
And I actually have a question, which I'm sorry to take up your time with this, but to Ben, do we form like a subcommittee of the LHD to be the study committee or are we all kind of the study committee? Um, I think that depends on kind of level of engagement from the commission members. I mean, I think uh, my sense is that, you know, somewhere down the road, the whole commission will need to like vote to, you know, finalize the study. But I think the actual work can take place and discussions can take place at like a subcommittee level. Um, if not, everyone wants to be part of the study committee. Um, so what I'm also saying is in terms of open meeting law, like two members could work. Yeah, I'll have to talk to Nate and Chris about that because I, I was wondering about that too. I mean, like uh, if it, it um, like the actual writing of the report, I mean, we're, we're not people, we're not going to do that all together. Um, cop, you know, we've done that with the bylaw before, <laughs> but <laughs> sitting here, sitting there and copy editing a, a giant report uh, together is, it doesn't seem the most efficient, but I think, um, I think members could do that work on their own and then contribute it and then, uh, um, or, or in pairs or something like that. But, um, and then at meetings kind of come together and discuss the, the progress and the, you know, next steps and, and stuff like that. Um, but we could certainly have, like if we have a subcommittee, one member could meet with Pat and go over what she's. Yeah, I think where you run into open meeting law issues is when there's a quorum. Um, of, of the commission and it's uh, then that's like a formally a, 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 a meeting um, that needs to be posted. But if it's below that number, um, say three, then, uh, um, then it's not a meeting per se, but I think you still just need to be careful that it's not, uh, that it's really the, the that meeting is happen is there, there's discussions about kind of content rather than like uh, actual like um, kind of like deliberations, I guess. So. Okay, thank you. So um, yeah. it will be um, on the agenda for our next meeting. And so <laughs> everyone's welcome to attend. I think, will we be in person? We'll still be, we'll still be still, Zoom. Still, still, I mean, unless, they want to, but it, no, it's still, um, we're still allowed to meet via Zoom. Um, and what I was gonna say is there, uh, there aren't any uh, project applications for that meeting. Uh, and today was kind of the deadline for someone to get on that meeting. So uh, at this point we have the whole, whole, whole meeting could be to talk about the process for the um, enlargement study, study. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, well, thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. Uh, thank you, Jennifer. Thank you, Susanna. And um, there, there must be a point in this process at which it's useful to have an endorsement from the Historical Commission. Is it somewhere, somewhere in here? <laughs> that might be at the, might be toward the end. Yeah, I mean, it might be at the point where Mass Historic is reviewing it. Okay. Yeah. Like that. Um, Again, I think the, uh, I, uh, I w when I was reading the chapter 40C, I was looking mostly at the process for like beginning the study, but I think down the road, there are steps for kind of fin finishing the study and transforming the study into actual uh, proposal for enlargement of the district. Yeah. And I think at that point, that's when there's, uh, there's gonna have to be a public hearing um, with notice sent to all of the residents and property owners in the district um and ultimately we are building towards town council approving the yeah. enlargement of the district so okay thank you thank you mm -hmm. and thank you pat and Hattie for um for being so yeah. eager and willing to continue working on this we appreciate it pat's done all the heavy lifting so far but i'm I'm sure at some point I'll get plugged in. Well, we, we support it. And that's the most important thing for the local historic district at 
to know. And your question, Jane, is at what point do we speak? And, and so, you know, there might be a role for us to support the formation of the study, the, the LH local history as, as, as studying the, the issue. And then another point supporting what they're recommending. I seem to recall there is a point at which we uh, offer feedback, I think, and support uh, as a as a part of that process, if I remember correctly. Yes, we'll leave it to you and Ben to, <laughs> to decide that. All right, thank you. Um, so we have uh, next is Mill River Archaeology Trail. Um, let me ask if we need, do we need like a two or three minute break? Sure. I just took one. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I'm fine. Do we want to um, kind of figure out kind of what we're, uh, we have a few more agenda items. It's 8.30. Um, the uh, the Mill River update and the Dakin property, uh, those are just very short items of mine. I just wanted to give a quick okay. couple of minutes to discussion. Then let's just let's just go ahead because okay. I think we can we can push through. Get through. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Mill River Archaeology Trail. Okay. So um, just to refresh everybody's mem memory, um, trying to figure out how to possibly fund a planning portion of this project and uh, in the uh, aim of also being able to fund it under CPA for execution. Um, ben is going to be getting an opinion uh, from town council, is that right? On um, the allowability of funding the project. Was that in the email that you sent to me, Ben? Yeah, basically our accounting department, they you know they're they're really mindful of you know audit auditing and and just kind of want to do everything by the book so they what they're looking for is an opinion from our town's attorney that says uh this project meets the criteria of um historic preservation under cpa we we i think it does you know the planning department we we all think it does i, I think uh, the language is clear there's been similar projects funded by the town and by other towns. Um, right, right. But I think what they just uh, want to have that formalized. So actually what I what I mentioned in the email, Robin, was just that uh, I, you know, I can probably pull from different pieces, but what I would would make that easier is just to have like a, a summary of the project that I can just is all neat and put together already that I can send to the our attorneys. Um, that's probably, you know, there's been multiple, uh, there's been the CPA application, there's the application you put together for the subsequent grant. But if I, maybe I can pull from some of that stuff to. Well, I was going to, yeah, I was going to um, see if I could finish the draft of the grant application that that would suffice to have a sum yeah. brief summary in there somewhere. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Um, and just, uh, a reminder that my argument was that this planning portion could be funded under administrative funds um, with the idea that, that anything, any preservation efforts that came out of that plan, that planning effort would be like a second phase that would go under historic preservation. Does that ring a bell? Yeah, I don't, my recollection is that the conversation with accounting department or specific or Anthony who kind of staffs the CPA committee. He, yep. he, he, my recollection is that they were saying it's administrative expenses is more for like, you know, legal ads and, you know, or like printing off those banners that say, you know, this project brought to you by CPA rather than. Right. I had just been going off the DOR guidance, which actually gotcha. specifically says this line about, the, exactly the sort of thing but and I think I sent that it's been a while I think I sent that in an email to Nate and he yeah. responded to that anyway we can we don't need to go back and forth yeah about that. 
Um, uh, Hetty and Meg Gage and I went and walked uh, the trail a couple of weeks ago. Um, and uh, Meg just sent me an email that Eric would be getting back to her soon with um, a proposal summary, including cost estimates. Um, ben, I just sent you a link to a Google map that I made with, um, it's not complete, but I made with uh, pins on a Oh yeah, here we map go. Map the trail so we can at least show that um, to folks. It's gonna be fantastic. Yeah, it's really, it's really neat. It's very exciting. So those so, yeah, are there's, all there's like pictures or some pictures. Yeah, if you go to the I think we're to the left of the pictures, but um that's great. Cool. Yeah. It's really terrific. That there's so yeah, there's uh, it was really it was really great to walk the site. I just I don't I, I'm trying to pull together the pieces to you know it's it's this wonderful task of having a very small amount to write and yet and needing to be very specific. So, but um, we've at least gotten this little piece in, and I have I have photos that I took and I was trying to get them uploaded yesterday, and for some reason they took forever to download to my computer. So I'll add them as well, but. Um, so that's where we're sort of stand before we do much more work. Obviously, we want to get the town attorney to give us the thumbs up. And then I guess we're looking at an October deadline for this uh, National Preservation Trust Funds grant application, which would be a matching grant. So the um, CPA funds and that grant application would hold hands. Looks great, Robin. Thanks. That old gristmill picture comes from the Jones. Yeah, thanks for that. You're welcome. <laughs> that's, that's all I've contributed so yeah. far. <laughs> that's okay. No, you were there. It was a great yeah. walk. It was a wonderful walk. It was. Yeah, I think I think it I I think with what's going on in North Amherst with the Mill District, um, with the way this kind of connects different little discrete parts of, of the, the town. I, I, I think, you know, in different kinds of landscapes and settings, I, I think it could be really fantastic. Um, and very, you know, very kind of, um, very Frederick Law Olmsted, very sort of, you know, gentle kinds of revelation yeah. about, yeah. you know, what, what all of this means. I think, I think it's, I'm very excited. Um, oh, and Ben, I had a question about um, while you're, while the, the attorney is being engaged, could we get also uh, an opinion from them on, um, this would be really helpful in CPA committee, an opinion from an, of them that confirms that we can pay for signage because the moment you talk about creating something in the historic preservation area because of the grid that says you can't create. Everybody says we can't do anything like signage or. Right, right. And if we could get a final ruling on that to just have for all time, that'd be great. <laughs> yeah. Cause what, I mean, what about the writer's walk? Wasn't, I guess that was from so long ago. It was before. It just wasn't objected yeah. <laughs> by anybody on CPA. So it all depends yeah. on who's on CPA, but at least we could have that question settled. Yeah. <laughs> You can use it as a precedent if you want to. Well, right. yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, uh, the Dakin property, potential use of single building historic district uh, or demolition by neglect by law to prevent loss. Right, so um, a while back now, a few months back, a friend of mine took me uh, on a walk around this property that I'd never seen before. And I had an informal conversation with Jane about it, that it's a beautiful um, series set of buildings. Um, and I just thought it was a fantastic example of what demolition by neglect looks like because nothing, no effort is being made to preserve it and even uh, you know to cut down the trees around the perimeter or anything like that. And I thought if the Historical Commission wanted to start to think about how to proactively um, treat a property like that, this would just be a great example. I don't know if we would want to go on a site visit just to take a look at it, but um, 
uh, Amherst College owns it. And I would imagine that with the lack of care that's going on there right now, their intention is probably to demolish it. And if their intention is to demolish it, and we know that ahead of time, or we could assume that the intention might be there to demolish it, then we would want to think about um, how to act sooner rather than later with either one of those tools. Obviously, demolition by neglect bylaw is um, we know a much longer process <laughs> to create a whole bylaw. And then we were just talking about historic districts. Um, this would be a single building historic district. So those are just sort of uh, philosophical ideas with an actual property that um, I thought we might want to think about. Is that, um, are those buildings her original house and that sort of thing? Janet Dakin? Is that? Um, it was Arthur Dakin, I believe. Oh, that's a different Dakin then. I thought it was. Yeah, there's two Dakin yeah. properties. Yeah, and I don't know. I was just looking at them yesterday. I don't know that the history that well. And then Ben, I think I sent you a link to something I found yesterday that there might be a folder at Amherst College with info on the property itself. But mm -hmm. um, So I remember when Amherst College bought that house at an auction. Mm -hmm. mm and paid, I think, this, if I remember correctly, paid way more for it at auction than, than the sale price was before right. it was right. for auction. Wow. Yeah. That was, yeah, that, Larry, that was Larry Kelly wrote. There's a, there's a blog post by Larry Kelly on this house and yeah. other Dakin property. It's not very much information, but he does, he does say that, I'm not sure. It's also, it is, uh, there's 36 acres of land too uh, right. with the house. So that might've been mm. part of the sale price. Right. But um, I think the Janet Dakin house, the Dakin house that is now the Renaissance Center. I right. Was the oh, okay. That's the Humane Center in Dakin. Yeah. Okay. But it's up by, so it's up by the, and it, do, it doesn't even have a, um, a macros entry. Mm -hmm. so that, you know, that could be, a, well. A starting know, point? That, yeah, that could be a place to start because, yeah. I mean, it, it pretty much, I think pretty much anybody can right. fill out a form B for any property, but it could matter more that the historical commission does it. Okay. Um, yeah, that'd be a good place to start. Is anybody interested in a site visit? Yeah, I'd be interested. Sure, I'd go. What yeah, I, I would. The history of the buildings, the dates or anything? Do we have any of that information? Yeah, there's information about that. A little bit, yeah. I believe. Yeah. yeah, should we set up a commission visit? Or if it is it, is it? If it's not an application to us already, can we do a formal commission visit or would it just be a group of people going? I don't think uh, we, um, we can't talk about it when we're there, right? <laughs> well, but it's not on our agenda as something we have to deliberate on. No, right? Okay, yeah. We, gee, I wonder if we need to make separate visits or, you know, like go into- Oh, well, no, I mean, I think it can, uh, I mean, we can always post it as a meeting if we if we if we if we want. Um, but I there's I think there's just no trigger for like uh, like it's not an application that we we have the the right or the 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 obligation to do a site visit. It would be something more informal where obviously we would you know need to we have to ask tell permission ask permission from Amherst College. Yeah, right. um, a group of disinterested citizens <laughs> want to eat and look around. <laughs> okay. That's kind of funny. I think you can kind of wander over there from the golf course. Yeah, you can. That's how Take I got picnic there. And accidentally run into each other with picnic <laughs> there you go. <laughs> and golf clubs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <right. laughs> yeah. It says here that a single original cat door in the home was left intact in memory of Janet. 
No, that's a different Dakin. Oh, yeah. different Dakin. Different okay. Property. Yeah, we just okay. established that. Sorry. Arthur, her husband was. Sorry. <laughs> ben, you have the, the link. I think I sent you the link of the Larry Kelly. Oh, great. Blog. Thank you. Yes, sir. Um, your email, it didn't, it didn't have a link in it. It's uh, Arthur okay. Dakin, right? It, it's Arthur Dakin. It's Arthur Dakin, yeah. Okay. Different Dakin. Thank you. Talking Robert. of cats, I have to go and put some cats to bed. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, cats cat, don't I'm get put to bed. I'm cat sitting. They're really lovely cats, but that's completely beside the point. Cats sleep during the day, Hetty. <laughs> hey, so how, um, shall we uh, set a date for a yeah. meeting ask, yeah. and ask permission? Someday that's cool and dry. <laughs> <laughs> That's <Over>. over. Thank you. <laughs> Dream on. Uh, weekends are best for you, Jane. Apparently, how about uh, Saturday? Is that good for people? The Saturday works for me. Twenty fourth. Yeah, it works for me. Are you talking about the sixteenth or the twenty fourth? The twenty fourth. Oh, July, the... you're in August. We're talking July. Um, talking July, I think. Yeah, I can't do the twenty fourth. Uh, I can't do the twenty fourth. I thought you were talking about this coming Saturday, the seventeenth. The seventeenth. Well, Jane and I are meeting on the eighteenth. I don't think she wants to spend the whole weekend with me. <laughs> well, I I don't know that we would have time. Would we have time to post that as a meeting? Then probably not. Yeah. What about the thirty first? Thirty first is okay. I'll be out of town, but but go for it if if all of you can do it then. Okay. Eddie, Robin, um, it will depend, but I have just I just have some plans that are in flux. Bring them with you. No, I well I might I might not be here, but <laughs> I might okay. if I am I'll go. But okay, what time? Um. Before it gets hot, since it's probably going to be hot by then. Yeah, maybe like nine or ten a.m. <laughs> ben, are you coming with us? Um, July thirty-first. You don't have to. I know it's the weekend. Saturday. Yeah. Jane and Hetty and I can go and do a movie of our being there for you. Yeah. Would you yeah, take, take some pi take some pictures, take some photos, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you can share them with us. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, Hetty, that's good for you? Yeah, nine o'clock would be good. Okay. Um, what's the address? Um, I have. Oh, it's uh, hard to find. You can't see it from the road. Oh, great. Yeah, so I think it's three, 355 South Pleasant Street. And it's just north of the golf club on the same side of the road, Amherst Golf Club. So, if we park and walk towards the golf club, course club we would just kind of veer off in the trees i think there's a drive right so you yeah. go up the if you were if you're walking north and you turn to left to go into the drive to the golf course don't turn there i think it's the next drive is that right yeah mm -hmm. okay so if you walk up the drive eventually you'll see buildings ahead yeah i think that's right yeah it was you were snowy just there. Where what do you mean you think you were just there no it was in the woods there was snow oh <laughs> I had to get oh, snow in my totally boots different now, the windows. <laughs> okay, we'll find it. We're intrepid. Yeah. And then um, we need to talk about our next meeting. Next, just a uh, commission meeting. Yeah. Um, I want, should we try to meet between the planning board and... Yeah. Also? What, what would that be? August, between August 4th and August... Um, 23rd. 23rd, yeah. Yeah, so maybe the week of the 9th or the 16th. I, I, I'm not gonna be able to do Wednesdays during that period of time, but I could do Mondays. I could probably do Thursdays. I can do Mondays or Thursdays. Yep, Monday or Thursday, so the 9th or the 12th. The ninth or the sixteenth, or the ninth, or oh, the ninth or the twelfth. Want to gear for the ninth? Yeah, then we have backup dates. 
Yeah. And our and the planning board meeting is fresh in our minds. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Would it be possible to um well I, I might be just a tad late for 6 30. Um but I, but I'll be there. No problem. Is the following Monday easier for you, Jane? No, it's a kind of standing thing I have on Mondays that runs till six. And while it was virtual, it was easy, but now it's going to be in person. So well, should we move to Thursday? We is Thursday time. better for you? We could just put it on it, the 12th. Yeah. Let's okay. do 12. Okay. Okay. Thank you. That way I don't have to start the meeting. <laughs> 6.30? Yeah. Okay. I can do it earlier on, uh, on Thursdays if that is uh, better for anyone. Earlier is fine for me. It doesn't matter. I could do earlier on that. Thursday. Yeah. Yeah, well, you'd rather, wouldn't you, Ben? Your day's awfully long. Yeah. What so about 5.30? 5.30? Does that work for people? 5.30. That works. That good for you, Pat? That works for me. Thank okay, you. Okay, great. Cool. Then if we August. run long, it won't be that late. Yeah, August 12th at 5.30. Cool. You'll have to remind us when you send the agenda out that it's at 5.30. Yeah, and on, on a Thursday. <laughs> and on a Thursday. <laughs> okay. Um, so given that, shall we uh, bounce future agenda items and projects to that meeting? Yeah. 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 I just, I, uh, I thought there was maybe a chance we'd have time at the, <laughs> at this meeting because we didn't have any demo applications to just kind of talk about uh, future agenda items and projects coming up. But, um, well, there was a chance. Yes, there was a chance. <laughs> I apologize for asking all those day one questions oh, no, it's okay. at, at the farm. I, 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 you know, being, I know it's been a, much longer history than I've been involved in. Yeah, they've actually come, they've come to the Historical Commission quite a number of times, um, often just to kind of tell us what they're thinking and get our feedback. Uh, well, how nice. Nice, yeah. 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 Because, yeah. Because that seemed, I mean, even though that they are dealing with a building that is very neglected, it's not, it's not really that they've intentionally neglected. I'm sort of trying to wrestle with this 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 right. whole issue really myself right now. And you know, but it, it's nice when people come and say, "Look, we've got this problem, and we've got these priorities, and we're trying to do this mm -hmm. and then with that." And you know, the, it seems to me they're thinking in a very holistic way about what they've got, what their resources are. Um, so I appreciate that a lot. Yeah, they've built a good relationship with us over the past five, six years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're really an exceptional group. Mm -hmm. Well, um, public comment. Is there, there are no members of the public attending. Yeah, I was the only um, unanticipated item I was going to mention is um, I think before, I think maybe in like May or something, I had talked about setting up a time for commission members to look at the civil war tablets and then uh i and then we were like oh well some some of you might be going to the juneteenth event and you'll see them there i'm not sure who ended up going but um i can still we can still find a time to to do that um because i think and i think the room is still set up as an exhibit with uh, the materials from the juneteenth event um i i was not able to attend unfortunately but um so I could, uh, the, the building's closed to the public, but we could arrange a time for the commission to walk through there. Um, is that something we wanted to talk about now or? Um, is there any uh, thought of taking the exhibit down or moving the tablets elsewhere in the near future? The tablets aren't going anywhere anytime soon. Um, and the, I imagine there's no reason to take the exhibit material down. So it's more just, you know, I know we, the commission was involved in a lot of the discussions mm -hmm. for many, many, many years. And uh, 
but no, I don't think there's urgency to it except for just you all wanting to see them. <laughs> so, but that, it can wait. But, I, I'd like to see them, but th the next couple yeah. months are are complicated for scheduling. So yeah, maybe better. yeah, might be better. Okay. For me, anyway, I'm just speaking for myself. Yeah, well, th thank you for remembering that, Ben. And, you know, it's fine for us to keep that on the agenda until we mm -hmm. actually set a date. So yeah, 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 that sounds good. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Okay, okay. I move, we adjourn. <laughs> so, <laughs> thank you. I think uh, that's not debatable. So, <laughs> well, we have to open it for discussion. Um, don't we? <laughs> no, we don't. All oh, in favor. Okay. Hi. 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 Okay. Bye. Oh. All right. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Thank, Thank you. you. Good night. Thank you very much.